It gives me immense pleasure to invite our first guest of today, Mr. Saurabh Gupta, Director L and D Skills Private Limited. He is going to share his views on experimental learning. Over to you, Saurabh sir. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, can you hear me, ma'am? Ah, uh, yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, your kind words. Honorable uh, Director sir, respected. Uh, vice principal ma'am and uh, distinguished people uh, attending the webinar it gives me immense pleasure to be a part of this uh, webinar uh, under uh, education 4.0 and uh, my topic would be uh, experiential learning and let me just Yes, sir, it is appearing. Start. Uh, yes. Okay. So my topic is experiential learning, and uh, as it has been said by uh, Benjamin Franklin, "Tell me and I forget; teach me and I may remember; involve me and I learn." So, at, uh, as as this shows that you know we learn things by getting involved into it. So, experiential learning is all about learning from experience learner's own experience so naturally the training that provides for experiential learning should be learner centric so when i say learner centric it does not mean that learners will uh, uh, get into the training mode and they will learn on their own it is extracting the experience from the learners so what should any training be it men be it management development or trainers development if it were to generate learning through learning learners own experience have had its starting point in experiential learning the responsibility for learning rests in the learners but then that's a very broad and omnivorous statement what do we mean by this responsibility is the responsibility single dimension clearly stated or it is multi dimension when i say learner centric what is my perception about it is it just allowing the learner to participate in some activity and feel good about it or is it just just respecting the adult learning principles so we need to understand it better we need to answer these questions and the moot point is that nobody is giving you the answer and we have to extract out the answer or we need to find the answer as we move towards the learning path so we as a learner will will find out the answer okay so now let us start so objective let let me just uh, uh, tell you what we would be covering in this particular uh, webinar so at the end of the webinar we will be uh, learning the experiential learning concept uh, because time is very less and uh, we will be understand the course model because experiential learning is nothing without course model and we will be learning the various uh, learning abilities uh, which supports the course cycle and also we will uh, try to find out uh, the learning styles which is very important uh because every uh, uh every every uh, learning ability has got some activities uh to back and then every learner has a learning styles we will try to understand what are the different learning styles and then we'll associate these learning styles and learning uh learning cycle for maximize learning so why experiential learning 
So before I start this, let me tell you that this uh, is uh, this is particularly for trainers uh, training and for uh, training trainers because uh, it emphasizes on the past experience and it is the, the past experience is the criteria for strengthening learning ability of the learners uh, towards the improvement in performance. Okay, so to facilitate uh, learning by doing, so this is something we all know that we learn uh, by doing. Uh, this is the only natural way which we through which we learn like you know this uh, covid uh, 19 uh, times also we are learning a lot of things we are experiencing some things from last uh, 40 45 days and this learning uh, will be with us uh, for many years to come so it happens because we are experiencing this and we are learning a lot of things through these times so now when it comes to education, so education provides you the context, it provides you some methods, some concepts, some theories and some policy, policies. But it is up to you or it is uh, up to that particular person, how that person uh, reacts to it and how that person interprets it. Okay, so everybody has got different personality, different agenda, different personal motivations. So people learn things as per their own experiences. And through their experiences, they make the things, abstract things, real or unfamiliar things, unfamiliar things more familiar. Okay. So as we see that people can, uh, uh, you know, students or people can uh, uh, find uh, uh, things on Google and they can find figures, they can find information, a lot of information there. But the wisdom and understanding comes from experience. So there's a very beautiful uh, 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 model uh, which has been developed by Cole. So we'll be uh, uh, talking about the Cole model. So this Cole's model, uh, the name of the scientist is he's an American uh, uh, psychologist, and uh, so he uh, developed this in 1986. So this is a continuum cycle, and uh, the the learning uh, depends on the uh, Previous, uh, uh, previous uh, cycle. Um, I mean, previous uh, experience plus the uh, other experience which is coming in the cycle. So, yeah, as you can see, that uh, uh, number one is uh, concrete experience. So, number one is concrete experience means that uh, your experience, and uh, then then how you reflect upon that experience, and then you conceptualize it, and then you uh, active. Uh, experiment. So you do the active experimentation on that. So this you can see the cyclic cyclic linkage, uh, which uh, reemphasizes uh, the continuum among the adjacent learning ability. So these are the learning ability. Okay, I'll give you the examples in the uh, for the course of action. And so here you see that problematic experience uh, you encounter in the stage number one, which is concrete experience. And then analysis is done in reflective observation. And then uh, the conceptualization or the, the knowledge conceptualized is at the stage three. And the number four is applying the new circumstance at the stage four. So you see that it has been uh, depicted in a cyclic manner because the progress of a learner in continuing to learn from the experience is dependent upon the effective learning at each previous and successive stage of the cycle. So these, uh, this previous and successive stage of cycle is very important for a learner to continue learn, right? So let us just discuss about the various activities uh, which a trainer can plan to, uh, uh, to develop the learning ability. So these are the learning abilities. Now we'll move on to the various activities uh, which a trainer can plan. Okay, as I told you in the beginning, that it is for uh, trainers uh, training because you know uh, the emphasis on the is on the experience, work experience. Now the learning activities. So when we talk about learning activities uh, for concrete experience, what we can do? Concrete experience means you are doing, you are just exposing the learner to the uh, some to some certain situation, and after. Um, uh, you know, getting exposed to that particular situation, you now uh, you have some some something to reflect on. Okay, so now uh, once you are uh, having any experience or you have any direct experience, then you have uh, some data to reflect on. 
Okay, so now you are reviewing that data and now you are reflecting upon your experience. And after reviewing the experience, here the trainer uh, comes into play or I mean in the in the first uh, concrete experience also, you just ask the learner to expose or to, to see the, to get into, to get involved in the direct experience. And then the, uh, the learner have, uh, uh, the learner has this uh, data to reflect upon. Okay. And then at the end of it, uh, it conceptualized the learning and then it, uh, then the learner uh, implements the learning or the concept which he or she has learned in the third stage. So let me give you an example uh, to, to set the context or maybe to understand it in a better manner. For example, you must uh, be watching cricket. So, you know, Virat Kohli goes and uh, he plays uh, an inning. Okay, so this is a concrete experience. You go and you play an inning, right? And when you come back, you are thinking about in your hotel room, you are sitting somewhere maybe in your, uh, 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 with your friends you are sitting and you are observing that, okay, what did I do? Uh, shouldn't I play that shot? Or didn't I play or didn't, should, should I play that shot in this way, that way? So you are reflecting upon it. Maybe you are thinking about the bouncer that, okay, I got that bouncer. I should not have, I should have just ducked it or I should have, uh, you know, hook it or pull it. So, so now you are uh, reviewing, you know, you are reflecting upon your uh, inning. And now the concept is, uh, the, now you are concluding that, okay, uh, so Virat is, uh, Virat Kohli is concluding that, okay, so whenever a bouncer comes, I need to duck, okay, or maybe I need to hook that. So now you are conceptualizing it. And when you go for the next inning, then you are experimenting with it, or you are trying it, or maybe you are practicing. And whenever you are, uh, going for any net practice, you are practicing it. So it is active implementation. So now uh, here, when you practice through it and you see the arrow goes to again to the first uh, concrete, which says that uh, after experimenting or after practicing that particular shot, you can go for again one inning and then you see that how you play. So this goes on in that way. That's why I said that this, uh, this cycle is very important because the successive and the previous uh, uh, learning ability plays very important role if you want to learn uh, I mean, continuously, right? Any question till now? Okay. Please, okay, please, please now, proceed. Please, okay. please continue. Okay, so now you must be, so we have spoken about the various uh, learning uh, cycles or maybe uh, uh, learning abilities. In the beginning, learning abilities like concrete experience and then we talked about the uh, various activities which we can do. Okay. So, in fact, uh, the concrete experience when you, we are in the class and in concrete experience, we can give uh, the students role play, uh, storytelling, maybe hands-on or group problem solving, structural exercises we can give. We can uh, you know, provide them a field visit. Uh, the OJT for on job training is not, uh, uh, I mean, here it is not relevant. And uh, for reflecting upon observations, we, know we can give them uh, uh, the feedback. So, observes, observer feedback is uh, plays very important role. Then we are debriefing them. So, we are giving them some activity and now we, are, we can debrief them. Then we can give them case studies, uh, group discussions. I'm talking about the reflecting, reflective observation. And uh, then the group observation also we can, uh, uh, you know, uh, provide them to data, uh, to, to collect data, okay. So here, uh, as I said, that uh, trainer's intervention is very important because here your uh, experience comes into picture. And uh, because sometimes uh, uh, maybe the uh, participants may not be able to think critically about the experience and they may not be able to verbalize their feelings and their perception. And so you need to make them uh, draw attention to the recurrent themes or patterns which appear in the um, participant's reaction. Okay. So, and then uh, we have uh, this generalization about, uh, I mean, the third stage called conceptualization. So in conceptualization, you can give them activities like uh, lectures, seminars, uh, dissertation uh, and maybe guided reading and number four is active implementation so active implementation we can 
uh, do the coaching, we can uh, organize micro uh, sessions, simulation, uh, project assignments or action plans. Okay. So now you must be uh, thinking that, okay, so learning abilities are done, then learning activities are done. So how would we make sure that uh, what is the learning style of that particular person? Okay. So to know the learning style, uh, we, we have this question here. Let me show you this question here and uh, we don't have much time. So but let me show you. So this is a question here which we give uh, to the participants and here are some questions. So what you need to do if you agree uh, good, then you disagree with this particular point. For example, I have strong belief about what is right, what is wrong, good or bad. So you know, you need to take it. If you think that you are very close to it. If you think that I often act, number two, I often act without considering, <coughs> sorry, considering the possible consequences. So you can put a cross to it, right? So if you find these questions very close uh, to your um, thinking, then you can put uh, tick mark and if you don't find it uh, very close to your thinking then you can cross it okay and what you need to do these are 80 questions so it will take around 15 20 minutes and what you can do you can just uh, write uh, so number two if i take number two as uh, i mean if i take number two then we will mark one if i cross number four i will put zero against it and if i take number six then so all the ticks all the right marks have uh, 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 number one, so you need to give uh, plus one for tick mark and for cross zero. Okay, so this will give you the total. So this will give you whether you are an activist, whether you are a reflector, or you are a theorist, or you are a pragmatist. Okay, so here you can see that uh, this is how you will give numbering. So if you see that it is uh, within the range of 13 to 20, it means you are an activist. And if it is uh, 18 to 20, then you are a reflector. I mean, very, I mean, uh, the number predominant quality in you is reflector and theorist and pragmatist. Okay. So, this is how you will uh, talk about or you will come to know about the various learnings. So, these learning styles play a very important role because, you know, on the basis of learning styles or on the basis of uh, learning styles, you set the learning activities. And these learning activities will help you to achieve the learning objective. Okay, so uh, it depends on the learning style of the particular learner. So you set the learning activities, and uh, so that the learning objectives can be achieved. Okay, so these are the learning styles which I was talking about, and uh, so let's uh, uh, discuss the learning styles. So. Uh, I mean, do you have any questions up till now? Any it's questions? fine. Going, going very well. Please, please okay. go ahead. Okay. okay, thank you. So now, uh, learning styles, uh, yes. So let us discuss about the learning styles where an activist uh, uh, learns more and where uh, it, uh, the activist learns least. So let us understand um, uh, this analogy through the swimming pool thing. So a learning act, learning style. So activist, the direct word which comes to, uh, uh, I mean, the, the synonym I would say or the one word for activist is involvement. So they don't know what to do, what not to do. They just do it and they will think about the consequences later. So this is the best part of activists that they just jump into the a pool and they will see that whether they are drowning or they are swimming. So this is the best part in that and maybe some drawbacks are there. So they involve in new experience, problems, opportunities. Uh, they they uh, work with others on problem solving, games, role playing exercises, able to lead a group and uh, they, they uh, don't learn as with that pace if they are listening to lectures, they are um, reading long explanations, reading, writing, thinking on their own, analyzing, interpreting lots of data, or maybe following very precise instructions. So, activity uh, activists are uh, the most happening lot, I would say, or I would not say happening lot because other other styles you'll feel the other styles are not. Uh, I mean, uh, that good, but it, it depends on the learner learning or learners, right? So they just want to get the real time experience and they. Think about the consequences later. Now, uh, the reflectors. 
the reflectors uh, are the, you, you can see this person is uh, standing beside the swimming pool and these uh, people who are in the swimming pool they are uh, uh, activists and this person who is uh, reflecting upon something and he is observing and he is investigating okay where the water is deep where it is shallow and uh, what this person is doing that person is doing so they are uh, he is this just uh, doing the analysis part and uh, so this is how they learn so you cannot bind them into timelines if, they, if you give them deadlines they will they will come under stress and they will not perform so they, they uh, the reflectors learn least when they are forced to take lead so if you give them the leading uh, part then they will they may not uh, learn things at that pace and doing things without preparation so uh, if you don't give them time if you throw them in swimming pool they will not uh, i mean they may not perform well and rushed by a deadline so they are not tied by the deadlines number three is serious serious means okay then did i tell you the right word for that developing data so this person is developing data activist was uh, just involved in the particular situation. Now, the making connections. So this is the person who is sitting beside the swimming pool with a lot of uh, literature or uh, books. And you must have seen um, uh, your students sitting in the class. Some, some students are activists. They, they come forward for any task you do give them. Some are reflectors, some are theorists. So here you see that uh, they, they look at the things, they um, see the things and they uh, you know, learn the concept, they learn the system, model, and theory, they, they, they learn things in, in the form of structures, and uh, they, they, they question a lot, and they, they go, and um, the theorists also understand complex situations. And theorists uh, uh, cannot work under the situation where the emotions and feelings are more involved, and uh, they cannot understand unstructured and ambiguous um, uh, ambiguous uh, teaching pattern. So uh, they, they want structured things and uh, theorists also uh, when asked to act without knowing the principle. So if they don't know about the theory part, if you can see the theory is there, theorists and theory. So they will not be uh, uh, fully uh, involved in the particular uh, uh, learning. Now the, uh, the fourth one is pragmatist. So pragmatist means, you know, uh, for example, after this training, you will go home, you will uh, try to uh, use this concept, you will say, okay, let me do something, let me do, uh, make a, uh, you know, um, action plan, I will try to incorporate some of the learning abilities or learning activities in my class. And so you are so, uh, you know, you, you want to use new techniques, you want to uh, uh, you use new techniques for practical advantages. You you uh, you try you want to try things. You want to get feedback from uh, experts. You uh, you you copy them, you emulate them, so that you know you 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 make them role model and you learn things. You want to practice as much as possible. Uh, some students are there. If they learn some concept in the class, they go to uh, their place and they they go to home and they practice those kind of uh, uh, sums. Or maybe they make those kinds of programs or they. They understand. They try to, you know, practice those kinds of concepts which has been, which have been uh, uh, discussed in the class. So these are uh, people who love to, you know, introduce to new idea and they love to uh, uh, see things uh, with a new uh, eye. Okay. So here you see the uh, association between learning cycle and uh, learning styles. So here you see that uh, experiencing so experiencing is a part of activists activists uh, want to uh, activists uh, want to experience uh, the new experience, uh, experience and they just uh, get uh, exposed to the new situation and then later on they review on the this thing when the reflectors are they reflect they see people theorists are they conclude later on and uh, then pragmatists uh, are for practice. So number one, uh, activist is for involvement, reflector is for collecting data, number uh, three, theorist means uh, connection, making connections, whatever data has been connect collected so far, and pragmatist is for practice. Okay, so uh, here uh, we have spoken about this, if the time permits, then I can tell you that uh, being a trainer, uh, could you please tell me being a trainer, if you are uh, in this uh, number one cycle which is experiencing 
or number one activist you are talking to activists so what you need to do being a trainer what role should you play or maybe a teacher or professor you know activists what are their uh, 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 styles of learning and what are their uh, strengths and weakness so as a professor as a trainer as a teacher which role you should play for activist Did yes, sir. Yeah, did I cover uh, too fast or what? Uh, no, sir. It is going very good. Only okay. we thought question answer will be in the uh, last session. Yeah, last session. I mean, the, we are on the virtual. I mean, the after. Ha to... ha. After your you when you will complete your session. Okay. Okay. So. Sir? Uh, okay. Great. Great. So uh -huh. now, uh, so this is what we have discussed as per our objectives that we have discussed about the learning abilities. So learning abilities were uh, like uh, concrete experience and then reflection and then uh, conceptualizing things and then uh, then later uh, uh, reflecting on the experiences. Okay, now uh, implementing new experiences and then we talked about the various learning activities. So learning activities we talked about uh, role plays, uh, uh, various uh, case studies, uh, guided group discussion and um, some field visits we talked about coaching learning and uh, then we talked about the uh, learning style so we talked about the learning style and, and, uh, uh, and uh, okay we talked about this uh, learning experience and uh, then we talked about the learning styles so learning styles are four kind of learning styles we talked about the questionnaire on the basis of which we will get to know the learning style of a particular learner and then so four kinds of learner and we talked about their way of learning things activist reflector and theorist and pragmatist and uh, so this is it from my side if the time permits i'm asking you a question and uh, the question is that uh, anybody can answer uh, that uh, if you are in the first cycle uh, first phase experiencing or maybe activist then uh, what uh, role should a trainer play or a teacher play uh, sir should they write in chat window should they write answer in chat window? yes yes they can they can yes participants please write your answer in chat window uh, sir can we take some questions which have yeah, appeared please please, please. Uh, sir it is one question from participant how we recognize or measure our development if we involve in an experiential learning uh, should i repeat sir yeah please how we recognize or measure our development if we involve in an experiential learning okay so you are talking about uh, see being a learner uh, you you experience something and uh, you cannot see that that how far have you gone you need a mentor for that so uh, th there's a uh, mentoring uh, thing which uh, uh, comes into picture over here so your mentor a mentor can tell you that okay you are growing or you are learning things so as you are saying that how would you come to know so because everybody has got different uh, experiences in the past right so uh, here nothing is wrong nothing is right so that's what I said. It is for trainers uh, training. So trainers training means trainer has got some experience on the basis of some that experience. Mm -hmm. The trainer will help you to collect the data and to come up with some information after collecting the data. Right. So here uh, the learner, when I say in the beginning also, I said that if I say that it is learner centric approach, that, that does not mean that learner will learner will learn itself and feel good about it. So you need a coach, you need a uh, mentor for that, or you need a uh, coach for that. I hope I have answered this question. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. The next question is from Rajeshri Madam from IT department of our college. Which is the best learning style? Is that activist is a fast learner? Okay, I mean, this is something very uh, obvious question, but uh, I mean, 
see learning uh, all the styles are uh, uh, equal because uh, you can't say that uh, only activists are good or this is bad or this is good all the learning styles are there but what you need to do you need to work on the other styles also for example when i did this uh, course i found to be uh, in a activist mood or activist and then i was in conceptualized or the third thing okay so what my mentor advised me that you should also uh, uh, use other styles also to learn okay so you should practice some other styles also to learn because you cannot be into the same uh, bracket all the time okay sir thank you uh, one more question is there sir from uh, jain sir of our college is inheritance play any role in the learning style inheritance Okay, inheritance means you are talking about uh, uh, you inherit inherit from your parents. Ah, yes, sir. Okay, so I mean the uh, it is it is um, very inheritance in learning style. Inheritance in learning style. Learning style, ha. Huh. I mean, this is very vague uh, thing to say because you know. But, Uh, when you meet your participants, you don't know about their, uh, you know, parents. You don't know about their, uh, you know, legacy per se. So yes. I can't say that you know we can comment on that. Uh, on the basis of question here, uh, you can figure it out. That what kind of person is this, and then you can probably uh, design your activity so that the maximized learning can happen. Okay, sir. uh can i take one more question sir yes yes go ahead uh this question is from harshavardhan desai which learning style is more better that's what i said you know i will say already answered this question all the learning styles are uh, uh, prevalent in the uh, i mean in the, in the learning or in the world so it is up to you what kind of uh, person you are so you know you should experiment with some other styles also as i said that if you are an activist then think about something so that you can reflect upon certain things or if you are uh, an uh, uh, theorist then think about you know uh, theorist you can't see uh, always you can't sit back and you see the things happening so most so you take the initiative and you go uh, wherever your teacher is asking to do something you go uh, uh, you know on the stage and uh, do something and as a trainer also you can uh, see that if the person is theorist then you can ask this person to come and you know give presentation or do something so that this person uh, overcomes that particular style and not overcome but you know come out of that comfort zone and get into the activist mode so all the four learning styles you should use for maximize learning okay sir uh, one last question sir uh, should i yes yeah. yes go ahead go ahead man. as a learner should the goal be to inculcate or to be try to be open to adopting to good qualities of all the learning types this question is from sri deshpande uh, should i repeat sir little bit lengthy question yes yes please yeah uh, as a learner should the goal to be inculcate to be open to adopting to the qualities of all the learning types okay see i mean this uh, this uh, it's i mean this person is, uh, himself answers this question because if uh, see if you have uh, if you can uh, inculcate all the good qualities of uh, or the the ways the different learner or different uh, styles of learner they learn then it is good it is good you can learn the things uh, pretty well right so that's good that is the only uh, i mean that is the uh, only uh, uh, reason behind this uh, course model that you should use uh, uh, various learning methods or styles to learn uh, things to the maximum okay thank you yeah. sir uh, principal Arte. sir yeah i over to you sir yeah uh, saurabh uh, yes sir uh, it's a wonderful uh, expression of your experiential learning and uh, telling about the cope cycle regarding the concrete experience reflective observations abstract uh, conceptualization active experiences 
and you have elaborated the how to identify the activists, reflectors, pragmatic and theoretical learner, and their uh, characteristics, capability, where they will be engaged, or they will be learning fast or not, or they will be having their interest into that learning. So it's a fantastic approach of specifically one experts who has got the proper experience out of his uh, uh, expertise, what he has gained over the period of time. He, he gives a lot of uh, uh, thinking on that and uh, he gives the insight to the other people also what uh, what were where what were his observations out of his experience and ultimately redoing the things and that people you know go into the again the cyclic mode to enrich the experience so what i understood out of this your uh, total presentation mm -hmm. now from my faculty's perspective and the student's uh, point of view the kind of the questions that you have, what are those questions need to be framed to identify the various four kind of the learner, the style that you have mentioned, and how it can be achieved quickly. Let us say I am the teacher, and I have to identify the what kind of the my students are. How how should how should I be able to categorize them in my class, and uh, after identification, what should I should give it to them? And so that the learning happens more matured and experienced kind of. So please, uh, if you can reflect on that, that will be a great. Sure, sir. Sure. Thank you so much, sir. It was a great question. And uh, and it, it, it was a very good question, actually. As I told you that when I did this course uh, three years back, then I did it in five days. So it's a very vast topic. But since you have asked it, so let me just uh, try to give you answer in a nutshell. So, um, see, uh, once you come to know that these are the learning styles of, for example, if you have 60 students in the class and you got to know that 50 students uh, come in uh, the first uh, activist and uh, the reflectors, then, uh, you know. Yeah, first question is there how to categorize the my class into this the, the different style? Sir, uh, as I shared the question here with uh, you, and okay. it, it has got some questions. And you have to ask your uh, participants to fill that questions. And uh, then on the basis of that, you'll come to know which learning style the person has. OK. okay. This is the only way. Yes. This is the only okay. way. Yeah. Okay. It has got very, very wonderful questions. You will you'll see, uh, if you don't know that person, you just ask this person to uh, fill it. And you'll be uh, you know, amazed to see the results. And you can just, you know, like a Janam Kumbli, you can tell this person, you are like this, you are like this, you are like this. Right? So this is what we do when we uh, mentor anyone. Okay, so these uh, the four styles have come, right? Now, yeah. uh, now uh, as a trainer, yeah. as a trainer, yeah. go ahead, sir. Sorry. Mm. So, you know, how many total questions will be required? 100, 200, 500 questions will be required to identify and classify them? Sir, uh, as I said, 80 questions. 80 questions are there. 80. There, 80 there, questions. Be more, yeah, there may be more questions. Okay. But okay. 80 questions, on the basis of 80 questions, you will come to. Okay. 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 Huh. And now, once you uh, identify this person is uh, activist, theorist, pragmatist, or uh, this second uh, one was, what was that? So activist, once, theorist, pragmatic, and reflector. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Reflector was the second. So uh -huh. once you identify it, what you need to do, you need to change your role as a teacher. So that's what I was asking this question. That as a teacher, if you find the person is activist, what you need to do, you need to give that person the structured uh, lecture, structured approach to the learning. So you need to give that person structure so that that person can be exposed to that particular uh, experience and can learn from it. If you find that person as a reflector, so 15 students are reflector, 15 are activist. So for activists, you become a structured, uh, you, you give them structured approach or you give them structured learning environment. For reflectors, you need to give them focus. You need, you need to give them focused environment. You need to give them case studies. You need to give them guided group discussion. You need to give them, um, you know, observers feedback. So that, you know, you give them feedback. This is what you are doing. So once you give them feedback, they will jot it down and they will collect data. And you will just... Uh, mold them towards a set of learning objectives. That what exactly you want them to learn. So you give them 
uh, feedback, you give them case studies, you give them some something to do, or you know, if they are in group, you ask the group's feedback also. Number three, if they are theorists, so theorist means that they believe in theory. So you become a coach for them. Coach means, uh, sorry, you, you become a guide for them. Guide means that now you are guiding them towards your learning objective. For example, now they have been involved in a, uh, in a in an experience, now they have data. Now you have to connect, you can, you have to help them to connect the data. So now you have to become guide for them. So you become guide for theorists and for pragmatists. Pragmatists, what you need to do, you need to become their coach. Coach means that if I know Viren Sehwag, so I cannot ask Viren Sehwag to play, you know, slow. So I have to coach Viren Sehwag. If I have to coach Viren Sehwag, I need to tell him that go and play as you want. And then I need to tell them that, uh, boss, when you are playing this hook, hook shot, you are doing this mistake. So please uh, work on this particular thing and you are good to go with the uh, hook shot. So now you become coach. So for activists, you become uh, uh, the, the structure, the uh, reflector, focuser, and number three uh, for uh, theorist, you become guide, and number four, you become coach. Yeah, so you become coach. So wonderful. Uh, my, my concluding uh, points will be there. So these all uh, the questions that you, 80 questions uh, you sir, would like to frame and give me, sir. Hmm? Sir, uh, sir, I request. Uh, uh, guess to switch off the presentation mode because because of that we are getting problems in recording can you please switch off your presentation mode sir yeah Saurabh, sir? Saurabh, yes, sir. Please, please, yes. Yeah. is that okay so yeah. now uh, can i speak ma'am yeah. yes sir sure yes. thank you sir yes, okay uh Saurabh, uh, what i will request you to tune with this industry 4.0 and align to the data science and artificial intelligence and capturing your intelligence various kind of the uh, classification activity of the various kind of the learner uh, dr priti patel madam is there with us so uh, i will be requesting you to tune with the dr priti patel madam head of department of it to sure, uh, make it automated system and to have the proper uh, uh, NLP kind of the environment to make it uh, automotive test to identify the various kind of the uh, learner and classifying yes. there, right? So we expect that this should, uh, you know, from you and stay tuned with the DYPCUE fantastic uh, lectures. Please go ahead. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you so Amen. much. Sir. Yeah. Uh, Thank you, Saurabh, sir. Uh, you. Making us aware about the learning styles which will help us in differentiate between advanced learner and slow learner. Thank you, sir. Please be Thank with us. So Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, ma'am. Thank you so much, participants. Thank you, it sir. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Okay.